Alright, today's video is about the greenhouse effect and climate change. Now the greenhouse effect is a process in which uh, heat from the surface of the earth actually okay. gets trapped in our atmosphere. And it gets trapped by these things called greenhouse gases. Okay. Which we're going to explain in a bit. Makes but, sense. Yeah. So uh, it's chemicals in our atmosphere are trapping heat mm -hmm. down by the earth. Right. In, in gas form, yeah. In gas form. Okay, so chemical gases. I got that so far. So here, here are the major greenhouse gases. So the, the most common ones are ozone, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and methane. Okay. So we're going to talk about each one as we kind of go through. Um, and each one has naturally occurring production of it, and then there yeah. is not so naturally occurring production. Yeah, right. so there's so two ways too. these can get in our atmosphere, and we're going to talk about the, like, the effects of both. Right. Yeah. And what these do is they're able to absorb the heat and actually reflect it back down. So right. if it's hanging like above in the atmosphere, hopefully my hand's in the camera, but Probably say there's not. carbon dioxide molecules up here, heat will rise up, it gets absorbed and then reflected back down. So it can't escape. So normally it would atmosphere. escape right. into space yeah. and be dissipated. It just basically and gets bounced out. off. Think and I like should a say the reason it gets the name greenhouse effect is because this is how a greenhouse actually works. A greenhouse yeah. is a structure you build so you can build plants in the winter. Yeah, you've seen heat. them. They're yeah. all made out of glass. They're mm -hmm. all steamy inside and it keeps it warm so the plants can grow in the nice warm conditions Very that true. they require. So one of the, the biggest ones is and I shouldn't say the biggest ones, one of the more important ones the one you hear for about naturally occurring is ozone, which is O3. Um, it's an interesting gas because it's actually very toxic. If it's down at low or like ground level, it's poisonous, can cause major respiratory issues, mm -hmm. you can die from it. Mm -hmm. We need O2. But the nice thing about this is that it's hugely important in keeping out a lot of ultraviolet, which we talked about a couple of videos ago, mm -hmm. in the sense that it blocks a lot of the dangerous radiation from coming Radiation from us. space. It shields us from radiation right. from space, but it also traps heat in. down by the earth or deflects it back mm -hmm. at us down here and in the troposphere. And there's roughly, normally, about 0.1 parts per million. That's what PPM stands for, parts yeah, per million. Yeah, parts per million, PPM. Well, is which just, what does that mean? That just means if you had a million molecules of stuff, Okay. One or point one, so one tenth of, of those one. one tenth of one would molecule be would be ozone. So Another way so to put that would be one in ten million molecules. Right, one in ten million. Okay. Yes. Maybe easier if you think of it, if you have one part per million, that means you have one little molecule per in a million, million of other, other ones. Gotcha. So. Makes sense. All right, carbon dioxide. This is what we breathe out. This comes out of a lot of combustion reactions. You can see we've got the smokestack image up there. We create a lot of this stuff with like uh with our industry. car engines, with industry, with making plastics, with making almost anything. It's basically from burning or exhaling, like us living things, animals, not plants. Carbon this containing back out. compounds. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they go up, less dense, high up in our atmosphere. And get yeah. stuck. So that's another greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide. This actually might be a little outdated. I think we actually passed 400 uh, I think parts so per too. million. It's um, a lot. But yeah, but it's it much lot. more than ozone. So yeah, this is a for every million for air molecules there is, so every, if you take a breath, there's definitely more than a million air molecules. But for every million that you take in, four, around 400 of those molecules are carbon dioxide. Right. Yeah, and you hear about this one a lot when they talk about industrialized nations or mm -hmm. like industrial right. waste, pollution, a lot of it's right. carbon dioxide. Now, the next one is methane. Now, methane is famous for being the gas that we smell in farts. In well, it's fart. actually not with that. Well, that's not the gas you smell. When oh, really? Fart, but well, no, that's it's, hard. it's a big problems. part of it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Big part of it. Thank you. This is why we have a chemistry test. I know you, a lot about the fart. Well, the fart that you smell is sulfur dioxide. We yes. don't need to get you're Actually, that. you're right. Yes. I should know better. That's all right. Thank you, Mr. But Boy. methane burns. That's why you can light your farts on fire. Inflate us. So don't give them ideas. But anyway, methane is actually the most powerful gas at trapping heat. The thing is, it's only 1.5 parts per million per much the atmosphere. So it's a it's a small, there's a small amount of methane in the atmosphere. Um, it is introduced into the atmosphere by living things as a waste product. Um, the main way, well, this is actually up for debate a little bit based on yeah. some reading I've done recently, but it used to be said that the main way that methane gets in the atmosphere is by, uh, or one of the big contributors is cows burping. Not right. the main way, but yeah. cows supposedly produce an uh, large amount, amount, large amount, of, large amount yeah. of methane compared to other animals. But that Which actually I've seen some readings that might be iffy on that, but we'll stick with right. it for now. But cows are the, one of the ways to kind of combat methane in the atmosphere is to cut down on uh, livestock farming. Which is why everyone should become a vegetarian. <laughs> There's I still another like my thing in there, though, too, that's a big important part, guys. There's a fair amount of methane trapped in ice. In, We're not in, talking about ice in your, in your freezer. We're talking about polar ice caps. Yeah, like at the North and South Pole. The ends of the Earth there. And as the temperature rises, so as all other greenhouse gases go up, they can make the temperature go up. 
you will melt more ice and release more, more methane, methane on top mm. of it. So other That's gases what's called going a positive up, feedback. It but, is. Other yeah. gases heating up the earth in this greenhouse gas effect can create more a feedback that makes the ice melt and release even more gas. So it's kind of like a snowball running downhill. Yep. we got to be careful. It's worse than worse. Right. And water vapor. This is actually the most common one. Yeah. Darn you, water. Why yeah. don't we just get of rid of water? Yeah. Water uh, vapor is water in gas form. You should know this already. Right. They uh, do. They're all over there. We don't really need to say much. I mean, this could vary. We don't have a measurement of how yeah, much there there's is. There's just yeah. lots of it, and it's a yeah. good thing. It's probably yeah, it's probably the most common greenhouse gas. It might. I think it might have the most overall impact. Um, but we can't really control water vapor necessarily. Right. We can yeah. a little bit, but it's actually we can more control it indirectly. We'll talk about yeah. it. But, we, yeah. we can do more bigger effects on other mm -hmm. gases. So let's yes. talk about how it works here, guys. Right. Now, there's two parts in your notes for this. You can either fill in the little blanks that we have actually on the picture, mm -hmm. or I put a little list underneath there where mm. you can just list them out. Step one, two, three, or four. Or do both. Or do both. If you're a picture and a word person, go crazy But well, they're going to be unveiled as we go. So let's step one is usually that solar energy meaning energy from the sun, sun goes through Earth's atmosphere and warms the surface, just like we've been talking about. Yep, heats it up. Okay, Then some of that Earth radiates, uh, some of that Earth, some, some of that, that heat, heat radiates, radiates the away the from the Earth. The earth. So we it goes you. up, you right? So it comes back out and floats back up because it's right. hot mm -hmm. and it rises. Now, step three is showing the heat that actually escapes in the space. So not all heat gets trapped on Earth. Right. Some does some go back out in space. Yes. Okay, but some heat is actually absorbed by the greenhouse gases and returned to Earth. Yeah. So you're taking a bunch of heat comes down or a bunch of light comes down, gets converted into heat. That heat rises, yep. and then some of it continues to rise out of the atmosphere, some and something goes back down. back down. Okay, and that heat can go down, back up, down, back up, yep. and so on, yeah. over and over again. It yep. creates that blanket of warmer is, air in our troposphere there, yep. mm -hmm. and that is the greenhouse effect, yep. effect yeah. essentially. So, do you think that this is a good or bad thing? So the greenhouse effect gets kind of a bad vibe. I find mm -hmm. it gets a lot of negative. Uh, a lot of negative things are said about it the does. greenhouse like, effect. Oh, it's greenhouse bad. Greenhouse bad. Greenhouse bad. But it's bad. not but the in reality. Worst thing ever. It's not. In fact, we probably no. wouldn't be able to live without We'd the greenhouse effect. Pretty much be dead. So I like to look at mercury when yes. explaining why this is. Okay. So, but let's talk about it. The greenhouse effects keeps the planet warm enough for living things to live. Mm -hmm. True. So without the greenhouse effect, you end up like mercury. We which... can't be too hot. We can't be too cold. Let's look at mercury. So mercury on the side facing the sun can get up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is obviously way too hot for living things. True. Yes. But Anything at alive night, so the sun, side facing away from the sun, it can get below 280 degrees Fahrenheit. So it gets which really is... cold even though it's that close to the sun. So why do you think that is? I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that they don't. There's no real atmosphere in Mercury yeah. right. to block in any of that heat. With no right. atmosphere, there's no insulation. There's nothing right. to hold the heat, and it escapes right yep. off. So that heat just leaves. So if we did not have a greenhouse effect, um, I'm not going to completely predict what temperature it could be, but it seems logical that if we did not have a greenhouse effect on this planet, at night it would get down to temperatures that would kill us. Right. Yes. They're so cold. Think Mars. Like that polar vortex is nothing compared yeah, to the temperatures Yeah, that would be we would great. See. We would be essentially like Mars. Yeah, yeah. Really want to look at it. Yeah. So yep. it is a good thing that we have a greenhouse effect. We want to trap yeah. heat here, but we don't want to trap too much. Too, too much, much yeah. heat. And that's so the and reason why people... that's what the fuss is about. Yeah, so sorry. You're, no, I'm actually talking too much, so you're fine. Uh, that's uh, fine. But the reason why we talk about it so much as a negative thing is because we're worried about something called an... Enhanced, enhanced. Right. And if you enhance it, you you add to it, you make it better. So you it's like a mod in a bigger, game. Bigger, bigger. Just yeah, you're bigger. making it bigger. Yeah. You're adding to it. So, so with a big, huge greenhouse effect, you end up basically overheating the Earth's atmosphere, mm -hmm. yep. which has got the opposite effect of being good, which yeah. would be bad. Yeah. And now there is another planet in our solar system that has runaway greenhouse effects, which mm -hmm. is Venus. Now that's an extreme situation because yeah. they're. Venus is like way beyond anything that yeah. we're ever going to be able to and do. Their right. atmosphere but is even really different from its right. composition. Right, but I'm just saying the effect of the It's mostly car it's a lot of carbon dioxide yeah. that right. traps all yeah. the heat. So what will happen is if we get too much of it, then temperatures rise too much. And that's when you get all these things that they keep talking about in the news where like the polar ice is melting and sea mm -hmm. levels are rising. Yeah, and yes. a whole bunch of a host of other issues are happening like poor polar bears can't hunt and things like that. Yeah. So we'll what, talk a lot more about. what we're trying to avoid is that enhanced greenhouse effect. It's right. good. So yeah. greenhouse effect, good. Enhanced greenhouse effect, bad. bad. We want to be just warm enough, but not so warm like that it starts Goldilocks. to kill off oh, life. It's, it's the porridge and Goldilocks. Yeah. The, the baby, baby bear, bear had the right porridge. You right. want it to be just cool. right. So, someone else can take this slide. I've been talking to you. So, the whole thing with climate change is that temperature has... First of all, what is climate change? 
climate change is uh, the idea is that you're taking the normal climate that you should be at, which I don't know, let's take an example. like Given you, centuries and centuries of right, data, data, the average temperatures. And what happens is it all of a sudden swings to being something different. Usually temperatures going so, up, although it doesn't have to be. It no. could be a swing downwards mm. in temperature too, right. but it's it's outside the normal climactic experiences you right. would be having. So we're not saying like, oh, today was really cold, no, so no. much for greenhouse no. effect. No. Weather, weather and climate, right? right. So weather, weather is just, climate. you could have a cold day, but the average right. temperature over years is still hotter than it has right. been in the past. Just right. like we talked about in the other, or you guys talked about in the other video, the whole difference yeah. between weather and climate. So climate change, the big thing is that temperatures have been slowly rising over the last few decades. Yep. Mm -hmm. And each year, it seems like there's a new report coming out that temperatures are going up and up and up and up. And at a rate faster. <laughs> so, and it's also increasing at a faster rate, which means that it, it has been increasing, but now it's going faster and faster every year. We're seeing a greater increase than we have in previous years. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I think that's done. Yeah. <laughs> So the, the problem is, is what's causing that climate change? Some sci scientists argue that it's because of the increased amount of greenhouse gases released due to human activity. Yeah. Other people, though, argue that that's not the case. And if you just look at over the course of like millennia, like thousands and thousands yes. of years, you see this general rise and fall of climactic change anyways due to ice ages forming and coming and going. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to argue that historically the Earth goes through cold and warm time yep. periods. The problem with that argument, at least from my standpoint, is that it's the rapid change that's occurring that's the issue. Yeah. Those changes that climactically happen on their own, we're talking occur over thousands of years. Gradually. Yeah. Whereas now we're talking about within the course of like two decades, you've got an overall yeah, temperature we're seeing change epic of about spikes two in the three levels of degrees. these gases that we haven't recorded in the past. It doesn't right. mean it hasn't happened but we have not recorded or seen this. We have no data to back this up. Right. Right. Here's what's cool for you guys. We would love you guys to form an opinion what you think one way or another on this. Like, what are your thoughts on the greenhouse effects? So we could talk about this in class. Yep. Right. So and then data. finally, we're, well, we're gonna show you this chart. We're not gonna talk about it right now. We nope. actually want you, there's some questions Three on your- Three questions uh, on your we're, little note thing. Yeah, we're gonna actually give you an extra five points on your notes. Yeah. 10 or, points, 10 points. To uh, <laughs> take a look at this chart and fill out the questions on your notes. I'm back. And I think that is it for this. Yeah, we're good. There's some questions at the bottom. There's some data points to look at. You can do those before or after you do your checkpoint. I don't yes. care which. Although I will say, just to tell you what this chart is, it's from an observatory in Hawaii that has been being used to track the amount yep. of carbon dioxide in the air as well as the average temperature yep. at that part in Hawaii. So um, it's showing, yeah, how carbon dioxide. Yeah, data all the way back from 1955 to 2014. Right. One of the reasons. You can see the parts per million on the left. And the reason why that's actually significant is because Hawaii does not have a large amount of its own industry that produces nope. a right. lot so of Right, so that carbon dioxide increasing is not because there's some Because there's a right factory right next, right to, right next to the sensor right. pumping it's out all kinds of uh, waste onto it. Yeah. Right. All right, so anyway, that's it. Take a look at this. Do your checkpoint. Be ready to talk when you guys get in class. we got a lot of stuff to discuss, pros, cons, and ideas. Answer these. Have a good day.